Hello and welcome back to Brick Gaming YGO. Today I want to talk about an interesting subject that I think a lot of players will find um, either helpful or at least kind of an interesting talking point, something like that. And today I'm going to be talking about how to play rogue decks or decks that aren't meta in um, 2019. So before I get into this, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, it helps me out a lot. If you guys subscribe, really helps me get my content out there more and encourages me to make more videos. Liking helps me just know what, what you guys enjoy, what you guys want to see more of, and comment what you guys think of this video in the comment section below. Okay, let's get right into this subject. So in 2019, um, it's really hard at this point to really successfully play a rogue deck. Um, a lot of decks right now, players have, a lot of rogue decks have been around for a very long time. And a lot of players know how to play around them or know how to play against them. But at the same time, you have a lot of players coming into the game or a lot of players who are really rusty on playing against these decks and won't know what to do. So the reason rogue decks are so good even though, like, rogue decks usually aren't the, you know, preferable option, you know, usually meta will win you the most amount of games. But if you go into a game and you're playing a rogue deck, like, let's say you have a really amazing build for Light Sworn, and you go into a game with Light Sworn, um, your opponent's not going to be expecting it. And unless they have main decked options to try and out Light Sworns, um, it's going to be a really hard matchup for them to beat during game one. Then game two, they side deck in, and that's where it gets a lot harder for you to win as a player, especially like if they won the dice roll or anything along those lines, it makes it a lot harder. But the reason rogue decks work, and the reason you'll see one top everyone from a regional or event like that, is the element of surprise. Like when you're going to a vet, 99% of the time, me personally and a lot of other players are prepared for meta decks and decks that are in kind of like in the mainstream right now decks are being used by most players so anytime you go up against a deck that's not as mainstream or not like relevant it kind of takes a player by surprise so that's like the number one thing for rogue decks the element of surprise number two and this coming comes in was like how you play the deck and how you utilize your resources so if you're going to play a rogue deck my the, the number one thing to be more successful with a rogue deck at an event is knowing the deck inside and out, knowing your matchups, and knowing your interactions against other decks. This will help you win way more matchups and help you do way better at events. So if you know like all your combos for your deck, if you know all the, excuse me real fast, if you know all your basic plays, if you know how the deck works inside and out, and even with like a lot of experience if you have like a lot of previous experience playing the deck like let's say you played abc's maybe like one or two for like multiple formats or even just one format in the past that gives you a good starting point and allows you to build from there so the whole thing about rogue decks is number one know your deck inside and out like know all your combos know how every single card in your deck works together and know what you can do with them so like a lot of the reason people fail with rogue decks is because they're taking the deck to invent to play for fun. And I'm totally like cool with playing it for fun, but you need to play the deck to its best advantage if you want to do well. Like you want to build the best version of the deck and a build that's going to work the best for you, which usually means going in with a build that you know really well. So as I'm kind of explained, knowing your deck inside and out, taking competitive build of your deck to invent will help you win way more matchups with your rogue deck. Next is knowing like what the meta is. So if you know what the meta decks are and what they can do at an event, that's really good starting point. But once you get there, you want to build a side deck. And my best um, thing I believe in for side decks is you want to build a side deck where every single card is good against multiple decks. You don't want to grab a random card that's only good against one deck or one player with a certain um, play style or matchup. So that's why I like, so back in the day, I used to play a card called Mask of Restrict. And it was just because I was scared of one deck or my opponent um, had a spear mode. But since the card hardly ever came up and was hardly ever sighting in, obviously the card was subpar. So you want to play like, my suggestion for side decking is hand traps and cards that out back row right now. Now when you are games, especially with a rogue deck, I mean there are definitely other options and there's even some decks where there's built in stuff you can side deck that is good. So for side decking, 
Just side deck what's best and know your matchups inside and out. If you know how the best deck in the game works inside and out, you know exactly where to hit them. You can win a lot of games that way if you know right when to hit. For example, a Salmon Great. If you if you were playing against a Salad player and you managed to negate their Gazelle, that shuts down probably 50% or more of their preferable plays. And if you have another response and can shut down another way that they could get into more resources, that wins you even more games. And you can do that with rogue decks. Like, there's insane combos out there for Light Swords, insane combos out there for ABCs. Even Magical Muskets have some pretty interesting combos out there. So, really, all that's about is knowing where to hit your opponent and knowing how to beat their deck. And finally, kind of relating to that is interactions. If you know how your cards interact against your opponent's cards and know how things are going to work, then you're going to have a like pretty much an inherent advantage against your opponent. Because let's say, for example, your opponent doesn't really know how to play against your rogue deck, doesn't have experience against it, and you have experience against their deck and know how their deck works really well, then you know how to like really get into the deck and really like stop their plays and make their plays less preferable. That's how you do better with a rogue deck. So that's kind of just another example. Also, like another example would be like not like where your opponent's going to hit you. Know how to bait out your opponent's cards with your deck. Know which cards you can activate that can be hit that you think your opponent will hit. It's really a lot about like getting into the head of your opponent with rogue decks, in my opinion. Like a lot of times, you just have to take it from your opponent's perspective and then kind of use your own bit of perspective to really understand the matchup. And you gotta think about like, I I, I really like um so a player out there named Billy Break. Probably most of you guys have heard of him. He treats the game as if. A, your opponent always has the response for your cards. And I think that's kind of the best way to do things. Always treat, especially with rogue decks, since your opponent may or may not know where to hit, hit your cards the hardest, always expect a response to your plays. Um, if you, you guys can go check out one of my previous videos for like which decks always do well at events and kind of talk about medium decks. And this is why I think like medium decks or even like decks where they're rogue. If you know like, if like, you were okay with like getting one or two of your cards hit, then that gives you automatic advantage over your opponent. Like if your opponent can play, if you can play through like one or two hand traps and still set up a board, that just really puts you in advantage to beat your opponent during pre during uh, future games or well future um, games in that round. So really, rogue decks do have a lot of potential. You just know how you just need to know how to play your deck. Know what's your proper side deck. Know interactions. What your opponent's playing. Know your meta decks, uh, matchups, all of that type of stuff. You'll do a lot better with your rogue deck. You'll go to an event and playing a super fun deck. I mean, if that's what you want to do, and that's just kind of a way to like maximize your potential for an event playing a rogue deck. If you guys liked the video, like, comment, and subscribe if you want me to go more in depth on the subject in the future, or even do deck profiles or cards I prefer playing in rogue decks. Um, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. See y'all in the next video. Brick Gaming YGO signing out.